We need revelation, wisdom, and understanding to grasp and understand uh, some of the stuff that I'm just going to be talking about tonight. So, as we start, we have, over the past several years, have been giving out all these different keys. And so tonight, I want you to recall some of those keys. Are y'all with me? And the couple that we're going to start off with, and you'll gain some keys as we go along, but the one that we're going to start off with tonight, now do you know what, do you know what a key is? What? What's a key? It opens and unlocks things, okay? Things that are locked or hidden away, we have to have a key to access them. And so we're going to, uh, the first key that we've talked about before is the micro and macro principle. Now, do y'all remember what that is? Okay, anybody want to share? Are you sure you know what that is? <laughs> okay, micro and macro principle is the smaller influences the greater, basically is what that is. And so as we do things on an individual level, then that's going to tap into the greater picture of what's going on in the body of Christ. And so that's, that's a principle that we, that we need to be recalling as we're uh, going to talk about tonight, the gates. Now, the micro of gates would be your personal gates. Okay, all of us have certain gates and gateways in us. And I'll show you a diagram in a minute that, we've, that Ian Clayton put out that we, you know, there's no sense in recreating of the wheel. It's very clear and accurate of what he's, what he's put out there. But the micro is your personal gate. So as you understand, now what is, where are we at? Okay, no, not that. I'll tell you what number, Calvin, because I don't want all that up there. Um, so in your personal gates, there's a responsibility of governing your own personal gates. And again, we'll talk about those. Now the macro of the micro of personal gates is the ecclesia. Okay, the ecclesia has a gate, and we're going to talk about the difference when we're using the term ecclesia versus church versus an individual situation, okay? Because we have to learn to differentiate those because those, are, those play out in different realms and in different dimensions. So um, another key is that we have to learn to begin to think corporately rather than just as an individual, Okay. Because um, we are very versed in individuality in America. Everything is about me. Okay, everything that we do, everything we think about has a component of me in it. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's not wrong. But there comes a point in our maturity where it becomes about others. And it becomes about the kingdom. And so that's a developmental thing that we grow into. Children, it is, needs to be about them. They need certain things that those who are governing, governing them should be equipping them, okay? And so there are legitimate reasons um, for that. But as we grow and mature in the Lord, then we aren't all, everything isn't fixated on us, okay? Now, God will always meet us at a personal level. I'm not discounting that at all, okay? He is a God who loves us each individually, but he also sees things from a different perspective as in a corporate body, okay? Now, this body here is a micro of the church body in the city of Jacksonville, okay? And so it keeps extending and expanding itself out. That follows the pattern of uh, when Yeshua said, go into all the world. He started with Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and then the uttermost parts. He's always expanding. And so we always need to be processing things in an expansive way, not just sitting on it ourselves and devouring it and living off of it ourselves. There is to always be that expansion. Now, the, set, the next key that we're going to learn about is occupation. And I'm not talking about your job. I'm talking about the principle of occupation. Does anybody know what that is? Probably not, because I don't know that we've ever said it. The principle of occupation is he who holds the gate controls the flow. Okay, that is a biblical principle. 
That, that applies at the individual level, and that applies at the corporate level, that applies at the city level, that applies at every level where the gates are active, is that whoever is sitting in that gate controls the flow of what comes in and out of that gate. Okay, I'll give you an example. Hollywood. There is a gate of creativity that sits in Hollywood that has been overtaken and nothing, pretty much everything that comes out of there is in a direct violation of the order of God. Okay? Now there is a, an ecclesia, which is a group of people that have decided they want that gate. And you see the fruit of them going after that gate. I mean, just the, the Jesus Revolution was a major production movie. It wasn't, it wasn't just a little Christian group. It was an entire um, change of focus for the, for the movie industry. I mean, it was just a completely different movement. So we see that there are things happening in different gates around the earth. Now, that's just understanding, but I won't say that they occupy that gate yet. Because if they were, there would be certain things not coming through that gate. Okay? Now, it's, not, it's, okay, to, it's okay to be aware of that understanding. Okay? Now, just to be clear, because I know people, I just want to be clear, um, all the gates were created by God. Okay? Lucifer does not create anything. He takes things, he steals, he kills, he destroys, and he misuses things. And he uses it for his benefit. Okay? You need to hear that. Because if everything you do with God is about you, make sure you're not falling into that trap. Can you, Al? Al? Okay? It's a very subtle thing. But we have to recognize what's what what's going on so tonight i'm going to start talking about the gates of hell and the gates of the ecclesia because we, we have there's an understanding that we have to come into because um our mandate here at atr deals with occupying a gate okay that's not all of who we are that's not all of what we do but one of our primary things is to occupy the east gate and so we have to understand kind of what's, what's, what's that about. Now, um, I do have a lot to release, and I'm going to go as far as I can go. And when we've had enough, I'll stop. Okay? So somebody can watch the time, or you can watch your, in your spirit and see when we need to stop. Um, now, at um, let's go ahead and look at slide number five. That's going to be the... The uh, circular thing, yep, yeah, right there. Okay, now this is, I don't know if you can see it. If you want a copy of this, you can find it on the internet. It's very available. This is a diagram of your personal gates. Now, we each have a responsibility, especially if we're going to be sitting in the gate, governing the gate, the east gate, and we'll talk more about what the east gate is, is that you need to make sure your gates have the right thing flowing through them. Okay? That's just wise to do that. And, and I'll be real clear. Don't say you've already prayed through your gates. Okay? Hear me? Do not say that. Do you know why? Do you eat more than once in your lifetime? You go to the bathroom more than once in your lifetime. Okay? There is a process that when we walk through the earth, we can pick things up that we're not even aware of. I mean, that's Jesus washed their feet. And he said, there's no need for you to get saved again. Just wash your feet. Cleanse yourself. Okay? There's that principle that's there. And so in your personal gates, those are all your personal gates, and then we'll go to slide six, because I, I want you to see this. Now this involves, can, can we see this? Is that, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Uh, it, this is your personal sphere of influence. Okay, it starts 
that small part where it says your personal gates, as you properly govern your personal gates, that is to feed out the life source that feeds through you from, the, from your gates should influence your family. Okay, it should influence your family somehow. And from your family, it should be influencing your neighborhood. And from your neighborhood, it should be influencing your job and your business. Okay? Now, that's at a personal level of when you govern your gates and there is the flow of heaven flowing through your gates, all of those spheres are going to be influenced under the government of heaven. Okay? And you have to remember, wherever you go, you have influence because the kingdom is within you and it's to be flowing out of you. So don't, don't you know, get rid of this small version of yourself and see yourself for who God says you are. That you are a gate that releases the kingdom everywhere your foot goes. Every time you put your foot down, the kingdom is released. And there should be reverberations of that, and there should be tangible manifestations. Okay? It's time to go from intangible to tangible. Okay? That's where I'm at with things. Okay, Lord, it's time. It's time. And I really do believe it's time for that. Now... We're going to keep moving forward. Is everybody kind of following along with me? Because this is just, this is kind of, this is basically a commercial, but we're not even in the meat. We're not even close to the meat yet. Now, again, God creates all the gates. So it's not about um, Lucifer creating anything. Okay, we've got to get the right, we have to come to an understanding of how much, of how much power Lucifer actually has. Because he's not as powerful as we really think he is. Okay? Do you know how powerful he is? As powerful as we make him. That's the illusion. If I think he's big and bad, guess what? He's big and bad. Now, I'm not going to disrespect and just, you know, people, I'm just going to thump him. Well, be careful, okay? He is, he, his position, he's not, he's not a little peon. And God does require respect in all of his creation. Okay? So just throwing that out there. Now, taking and occupying a gate is not easy. It's not easy in your personal life. <laughs> there's a struggle. There's a resistance in that. I mean, have you had an issue you've had 10 years? Anybody had one of those? Okay. That should show you that the gates aren't that easy to always take. There is a struggle and there is always resistance in taking ownership of the gate. Why? Why is it, why is it always a struggle? Because he who holds the gate controls the flow. So the gates inside of you have to be under the government of God and the flow of God moving through them. Or a, or a demonic spirit will sit in those gates because you're fearful or you have an issue you haven't overcome and they will sit there and they will regulate things in and out of that gate. And your life becomes a life of struggle and, and difficulty and just always two steps forward, three steps back. Two fa you ever been in that cycle? You're making a lot of progress and then wham. Okay? Chances are there's something in a gate that's, that's there because it's a lie, that you're believing a lie about who you are, and it sits there and it controls you and influences you. Okay? So we can, we can, we can easily deal with that stuff. Now, now what in scripture, uh, is everybody okay? Okay? Any questions so far? If you have questions, we'll, we'll, we'll ask. Does everything make sense yet? Is it making sense? Okay. All right. Now, in scripture, what are the gates of hell? What 
What are they? Okay, I'm going to give you Connie's definition. Okay, I'm sure it can be elaborated, you know, and, and people can get in there. But basically to me, the gates are hell, of hell are in the earth that are being controlled by a principality or a power of evil, and they release evil into the sphere or realm of influence that they reside over. Okay, and we talked about Hollywood would be considered one. Okay, that's not the only one. There are lots of them, lots of gates. Now, the, realm of un the realms of darkness understand the principle of occupation. That's why they fight for control of a gate. Because they know if they can seize the gate, hold the gate, and occupy it, then they can control everything that flows in and out. Okay, they, they're very much aware of that reality. Now, one of the primary places, and we're going to talk about the scripture. Um, Bill mentioned it a little bit last week, just kind of in passing. He mentioned about Matthew 16, and we're going to talk about that. Y'all remember what, he, what it said? Matthew 16, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay, the church. Okay, so we'll, we're going to look at that one a little bit. Now, now the gates of hell come against those who hold the gates of Ecclesia. Okay, they do. Okay, we can talk about, we can talk about oneness, we can talk about victory and all that, and, but the reality is, is one, they're not as smart as we think they are. They've lost the battle, but they keep coming. They keep pressuring, they keep resisting what God's doing. Okay, now, now this is, this is, a little bit about, uh, I'm getting kind of ahead of myself, so I've got to slow down. Um, so, so we have to understand, again, do you, do you understand that principle, he who holds the gate holds the, holds the control of things? Okay, is that deeply in your brain yet? Okay, get it, let it just do that. Let it get in. Okay, let it get in there. All right, now, gates outside of your own personal gates, can only be held by an ecclesia. An individual person cannot hold the gate by themselves. It's not designed that way. Okay? One person cannot hold the city gate of Jacksonville. They can't, it's not designed that way. God requires that we become united in spirit and in heart and in purpose so that he can empower a group of people to hold a gate. So this is where we as a body have to begin to transition out of individual thinking about everything and kind of become more corporate-minded. Because if we don't become corporate-minded, we're going to stay fixated on what our individual issues and things and, that we need, rather than understanding it takes all of us to hold the gate. Okay, now that's a hugely important, one, transition to make, one that has to have a different level of understanding, do you know God's presence when he comes into a building, he always comes in two ways? As an individual, he'll come and meet you, but he comes to meet the corporate body too. And we have to learn to understand the presence of God meeting us as an individual and the presence of God coming as a corporate thing. Okay, there is a drastic difference. There was a drastic difference in this week and last week. Drastic. Did we all hear? Anybody, anybody hear from last week? Yes. Was it different than it was tonight? Yes. Completely, completely different. There was an openness for the corporate body last week that was not there tonight. Now, I'm not saying God didn't touch you individually and speak to you individually, but there was very little, if any, airspace for the corporate body to move. Did you, did you perceive that? 
Okay, did you recognize, okay? You should recognize. And see, this is what we have to learn to do. Because we can't settle for God just coming and, and, and helping me. Okay, that is, I am not discounting that. Please hear me. Please hear me. I'm not discounting that. But there is a presence of the corporate anointing that we're looking for and that we have to have to maintain the gate. I mean, it's, that's just the reality of this stuff. So, what was the difference? Okay, because that's going to be this week. That will be what me, Sean, and Virginia, and we'll be praying about all week long. What was the difference between last week and this week? Because it's not, just, it's not about the people. Good Lord, you guys have heart. You wouldn't even be here. We all would have left a long time ago. You know what I mean? So it's not an issue of the people. It's an issue of what's coming and overshadowing us. And we've got to learn to discern it, and we've got to learn to deal with it at a corporate level. Because if we can't deal with it at a corporate level, we cannot occupy the gate. It will be taken from us over and over, and we'll stay in this constant thing of two steps, oh, we got it this week, oh, we lost it. And that is not how an open heaven is supposed to work. Do you, do you recall how easy it was last week? I mean, it was so easy, you could have gotten up and flown around this building. I mean, it was just wide open. The airspace was free and clear. But it wasn't tonight. Now, if you, if, you, if you touched heaven, thank you, Jesus. You need to thank Jesus for that. But as a corporate body, there was a stifling. Now, I'm, you, know, you can talk with me afterwards if you disagree, and we'll talk about it right now. But I'm, just, I'm telling you, there, is, there was a freedom that we encountered last week that was not here tonight. Okay? And that's not anyone's fault. Okay? Nobody's blaming anybody, but we do have to access the key. What key did we miss using tonight to open that thing up? Okay, everybody okay? Because I'm, I'm coming strong now, do you hear me? Okay, and if, you, if, you, if we don't agree, then we'll, we'll talk about it. But I'm just saying from where I'm sitting and where I, what I experienced before and just last week, it was like night and day. I could, I could just sitting there tonight. I was, well, I'm not even going to get into all of it. But it was just, it was a very different, very different situation. Yeah. Now, oh, let me get, i got to find my notes. I've gone all, I done gone off, off the rail here. Um, so a, a key, I, I'm, I'm going to keep bringing up the keys because we've, we've got to learn to use them. Um, again, expand our understanding beyond self to the corporate new man. And that's the many members become one. Okay? That's something that God has to do, but we have to position ourselves for that to happen. Okay? You, we have to come in with a mindset that I'm here to connect and to join with this body. I'm not here just to get what I want or need. Okay? There has to be a transition in your thinking. Okay? Now, in you, if you do that in a corporate thing, your individual stuff gets dealt with. Don't you even got to worry about that. God is not going to leave you high and dry. He is not going to ever leave you high and dry. And so, but it's just an adjustment of us learning as a corporate body how to flow a little bit differently. Now, when we talk about the East Gate, we have to have understanding so that we can see the gate and understand what the East Gate is. Now, in the next week or two, Virginia is going to really take the scriptures and break down what the East Gate is, okay? Because that's an important gate, and I'm, I'll talk a little bit about that a, a little bit more. Now, another key is always, always be thinking multidimensionally, not just this plane. You want to think multidimensionally. And we have to allow the spirit of wisdom and understanding and revelation to expand our spirit and understanding so that we are, we are processing primarily through our spirit, not through our mind. Because if we only process all this stuff through our mind, it's going to seem really silly. Okay? But when it's by the spirit, it makes complete sense. 
So, so we have to allow that the, uh, understanding to get us there. Now, the things when I'm talking about things in the spirit realm, I'm not talking about some theory. Okay, there is in the in the realm of the spirit is very real. Okay, and we're learning that, and some are experiencing more of that reality than others. But there are actual real gateways, gates, byways, pathways, highways of trafficking and trading that are going on 24-7. Okay? And, and some of that trafficking is not God's kingdom. It is trafficking of darkness and evil. And we have to, we have to recognize that we have a responsibility. The church has a responsibility, and I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'm going to slow down because... Because I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there, okay? So, cause I'm ta- am I talking fast? Because I feel like I'm just flying, okay? Okay, I'm from the south, so I'm talking fast for me, okay? So, so I hope, you, hope you're listening fast. Now, one of the things that, that we are calling people out of is the normal Western civilization... Christian lifestyle, where you are not just a good Sunday go to church believer, but that you understand truly why God left the church here. Does anybody know why did God leave the church here? Can I tell you it wasn't to meet once a week? It wasn't just to feed the poor and it wasn't to do all these really good things. He left the church here to rain havoc over darkness. I mean, absolutely just rain havoc. And and we have to recognize that's why we're still here. If he just wanted us to meet once a week and get our feel-goods and go out and be a nice person, if that's, your, if that's your Christianity, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you know you bought the wrong one. You need to trade in and get the real one because that, that is not the real Christianity that, that Yeshua is about. Okay? So we're calling people out of that. Okay? All, that's, that's the call that we release into, into the spirit from this body. Come out of normal. Come out of what you've been told is how you're supposed to live and learn to live the way, if you read the book, the way they did. I mean, have you read the book of Acts recently? I know we have, but like, have you read it recently? Have you read the Gospels and watched what Jesus did? Not just saw the chosen. Have you actually read the book? Because the chosen follows it Roughly. Okay, you know I'm going to get it in there, Pam. You know it. Okay, but, 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 but it's time we looked at that and gone, is this what my life looks like? Because this is what the scripture says it's supposed to be. I mean, when was the last time you cast out a demon? Uh-oh. Is that something you're even open to? Or are you scared? I know people are scared of demons. You better find out who you are. Okay. When was the last time you laid hands on a sick person? When was the last? See, when was the last time we did what we actually read about? See, I, I don't want that. I don't want the normal come to just come once a week kind of thing. I, I, don't, I, I don't have time for that. I really don't. It's unappealing. It just sucks the life right out of you. And there's no, there's no real substance in life to it. Okay, so, so we're calling you out of that. All right, we're going to keep moving. We're going to get back to the spiritual gates. Okay, I have number... Uh, Uh, slide 11, which is something we've been saying over and over. I want you to say it out loud. Okay, who's, okay, he, 
Okay, everybody say it out loud. And say it like you mean it. Okay, say that again. Got that yet? Got it? Okay. All right, so you can go to the next one. Calvin? Okay, now this is the ecclesia sphere of influences. It's different than your personal sphere. Okay, it starts down in the little circle is the ecclesia. And as the ecclesia is structured properly and it's under the government of God, and it has gates too then it begins to influence the city that begins to then influence the state, that begins to influence the nation, that begins to influence the uttermost parts. Okay? Now, wherever you go, whatever dimension, whatever realm you go, you have influence in that realm. And if you have influence, then access that influence. Use it to advance the kingdom. Okay, we can go to the next one. Because there's a principle that we have to make sure we understand. Are we there? Light? Thank you. Let's read this one. Light. Always. Okay, light will always. Okay, we got to say that one. We're not even unified on that one yet. Y'all ready? <laughs> light. When? When? Are you sure? You sure? Are you sure? Okay. Okay. Are you sure? Okay. So when darkness comes, you come in contact with darkness this week, because you better. Do you know why you better? Because when we advance the kingdom, we are going to encroach into darkness. Okay. If you never if you never go, you never have to deal with darkness. I'm not sure you're advancing yet. First of all, where are you going? What's your what? What do you mean? Where are you going to a place you're never touching darkness? Right. Like, right. <laughs> you go, you go right. Right. Okay. So recognize who you are and that you are a light being that carries the glory of God in you, and wherever you go, you have influence and you have authority to deal with whatever darkness you come in contact with. Right. Okay? So, so just recognize that. Now, that's a principle. These are, these are keys that if we actually are using them, then we can, we can move in and out very easily. Okay, now again, I'm going to come back to the gates are held, spiritual gates outside of your personal gates. Okay, what I'm going to talk about now is just about corporateness. It takes the unified corporate body governing the gate to keep it. Okay? Now, I'm not sure we are familiar with how to do that yet. I'm not sure. We have some theories about it. But maybe maybe you have. I've been I've been contending for the East Gate for twenty years. Twenty years to get in that gate and to govern it. And I honestly think that we're now, we now have possession of our part of the East Gate. I'm not going to say the entire East Gate, okay? But it, the portion we are responsible for as a body, I think we have. Now, the goal now is to keep it and to occupy it, okay? That's the objective. And just because it's an objective doesn't mean we attain it. There's, we have to use the keys, and we have to remain a corporate body, Corporate, it's got to be that. So now, again, we, um, we kind of talked about it a little bit tonight. There, was, there has been an oppressive resistance against the corporate body here. 
I mean, how many of you struggle to even get here? Okay. That is an indication that you are under resistance and oppression. Don't take that as just, oh, well, that's just how life goes. Because you dictate how your life goes. Under the government of God, you dictate it. Outward circumstances aren't supposed to dictate what we do as sons. Okay? So if everything you do to get here is a struggle, to pray once you get here. How many of you have a struggle to pray just when you get here, after you get here? It's like, it's like, it's like treading through mud sometimes. Okay? Hello, that is resistance. That is an oppression. And do you, do you know what the key to breaking that is? High praise. I just, I hate to say it, high praise. Do you know what high praise looks like? Go read Psalm, the last Psalm. It's what binds ch- the, the darkness in chains of fetters of iron. High praise is standing up, lifting your hands, having expression through your body. Now, I know, I know, I know, I can, I can sit there too. But there comes a point where we go, is enough enough yet? Like, honestly, if it stays like this, what in the world are we doing? I'm just, I'm just being honest. We have to engage the key that breaks through things. And that, honestly, that will be high praise. And you can argue about it all day long, but that's what the scripture says. And I'm just sorry, that's just how it is. And you can say, well, I don't like it, and I don't agree with it. Well, sit your little butt down there, I must cuss. You just sit right down there then. And you stay under suppression and oppression. It's just, it's just how it's going to be. Yeah, all right, we, we can talk about that later, but I'm just saying, from where I sit and looking at Scripture, that really is, that really is a, the difference. Um, as we're learning to move as a corporate body and not as individuals, that's the objective that we're in right now. How do we come in, break through the oppression, break through the suppression? I mean, literally, it was probably... And I, I, I'm going to say we've been under it for a year, at least a couple of years. I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? Now, you may not agree with me or whatever. I'm just saying from where I'm sitting, it has been hard. It's been hard forever here, but just really in the last few years. Okay, are y'all okay? Everybody okay with me? Yeah. Okay, if you're not, come talk to me later. Okay, I'm just, I'm just speaking honest here. And we've got, we, we just, we're growing up, so I'm going to talk to you like adults. I ain't going to talk to you like babies. I'm talking to you like adults. And so we've got to learn to discern this stuff. Now, we have to determine when we come into this place, are we going to be a thermostat or a thermometer? That's just the reality of it. You know what a th- thermometer does? They come in and go, hmm, oh, mm, I'm just going to sit here. Okay. You know what a thermostat does? Ooh, there is some oppression. It is time to turn up the nozzle and get, some, get something flowing here. And we step into I praise and we break things open. We break open wells of, of praise. We break open things that are locked inside of us. I mean, th- it, this is what it takes to hold, a, hold the gate. It is not going to take coming in and going, I just don't feel like it. I'm saying we will never hold the gate like that. We will absolutely never do it. And we've got this body, we have to make a decision about that. I think it's I think it's I think we get to decide if we're gonna hold our portion. I think God will equip us, but we have to have that yes in our heart. Is everybody okay? Okay. So you're saying in a situation like we had this evening, what exactly, how does we usher in that high praise to break through it? What does that look like corporately? I think, 
Is it one person right. standing up and screaming one and per, jumping well, or giving a word yelling. or what? No, it's not. It's not screaming and oh, yelling. I mean praise. Well, yeah, we've got to we got to differentiate. It is but you being said it's intent. Movement. Having an intent is the first thing, right. and then you open your mouth and you release the words that need to be released. Oftentimes, I find what breaks things open for me is when I be, begin to declare the names of God. I begin, I, when things are like they are, I call on Jehovah Perizim, the God of breakthrough. I'm calling on you, the God of breakthrough, right now because we are, we are being suppressed. And we don't, we don't just sit back hoping something's going to happen. Because the enemy is not going to do that. He's not going to give you that kind of break. And so we, it, it really is, it, it could be two or three going, okay, we're, we're just, everybody else can sit like bumps on a log, but we're going we're gonna to praise. We're going to go into high praise right now. And you just begin declaring who God is. We exalt you, the king of all kings, that you are good, that you are kind, that you are merciful. There is no God like you. And you just begin to do that. Do that in your homes for the love of Jesus. Do that. Change the atmosphere everywhere you go by declaring who he is. It will shift you and it shifts your environment. It's hard to do it in here because I don't know if we're doing it at home. Pat wants to say something, so... There's a website called highpraise.com, and um, her name is Kathleen. I can't remember her last name, but anyway, she really teaches about this. Um, she's actually one of the students from Dr. O. I found out about her on um, Terraforming the Year. But anyway, after hearing her message, I, I was so moved, you know, just recognizing all that is going on. And so I really, I just figured, I'm just going to start because we are the micro you know, to, to bring it into here. And I found that as I would move into high praise and high praise, it's, it really is declaring who he is. You're not addressing yourself at all. Like, well, I'll go out there and all of creation bows before you, the King of Kings. I, you know, you're focusing on him. And, um, you know, you're not addressing yourself. You're not addressing the enemy, but you're just really focusing on him. The very first day that I went out there, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this, and I'm going for a bike ride, and I just, just, you know, once you get in, it's just amazing what happens, and I got down to the end of where I go, and I turned around, and I looked up in the sky, and I saw the chemtrails, and I have a picture of this if anybody wants to see. Well, there were feathers, cloud feathers in the sky that were covering these chemtrails, and I saw that, and I will tell you, I have not felt so loved in so long because, I mean, he's protecting you. Y you know, I mean, you know, and I just, I, I just felt like, wow, like I just opened up something here, you know, that the angels came down. And I will also say one other thing as I've been practicing this, um, because it, came, it became very hard for me to pray. It's one of the reasons why that I started going into high praise. Prayers that I weren't even praying for were being answered. I mean, it was just, it was, it's just crazy, just, just little things. So I encourage you, highpraise.com is a great place to go. So and we may practice that a little bit tonight, and, um, but I do encourage you to do it, do it in your homes. And so there is a structure that gets built in you when you're doing that, so that when you come into places where there's resistance, your structure is already established. Because if you come in and there's no structure of doing that, your voice print isn't in the atmosphere yet, it's going to be harder, okay? Because, and you need to do it out loud. Because that releases your frequency and your voice print into the atmosphere. And that's extremely important in the realm of the spirit, is that when they hear your voice, they know who you are. Okay, and so that's, that's an important thing. And so just, just a key to encourage you to do that. It's a part of learning to govern a gate versus governing your personal gates. Like I said, this is all us transitioning into. Now, as an individual, right, we, we govern from that place of rest. Okay, but you have to labor into rest. Okay, you know what that means? 
you have to struggle to go against the resistance to get into rest. So why is it going to be any different for the ecclesia? It's going to be the same, it's the same pattern. For, for an ecclesia, this body to come into a place of rest, we're going to have to labor through and get things out of the way that are resisting us. Okay, that, it, it's just how that works. There is a scripture <laughs> that says, the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force. This is exactly what we're talking about. Now, I don't know what that looks like in your paradigm, but in mine, that's not real blase blue. That means, uh-oh, I'm coming after that. I'm going, those people that are in bondage to that addiction, I'm going there. That's where I'm going. I'm going into that place. So recognize that, that the life God really, that Yeshua has called us into is a life of really participation and activation. It's, it really is. I mean, aren't y'all bored with everyday Christianity? I mean, I'm just, I'm just bored. Like, let's do something. Like, really do something where there's tangible evidence of it. Not where we go play up in the heavens for three weeks and come down and nothing's changed. Okay. I'm not sure what we were doing up there. Okay. I'm not sure we were in the heavens, if you want to actually, if you want me to actually be honest. There should be changes in us when we are engaging with heaven. There should be changes in us that will manifest outwardly. Okay. Now that's if that's the process where you're at, then you keep pushing until you're seeing real manifestation in your life. Don't stop pushing. Keep pushing for that. Um, so recognize that, that in, in the skirmishes that we are going to come against as we advance the kingdom is that we do take the position that we have already won this war. Okay? It's not a battle about a war. The war is done. What it's a battle for is taking the captives and taking the spoils of what the enemy has taken. That's what we're after. That's what we're doing. And, and we do that as we choose to do that. Okay? We, it doesn't mean there's not, not going to be resistance. There will be resistance. But we, we move through the resistance. Okay? Everybody still okay? All right. Everybody good? Because I'm going to keep, keep going here. All right. Now, one of the ways that we do this, I'm trying to find out. Um, I'm going to let me I'm gonna go back to my notes a little bit. Um, when, when we are sitting in the, the gate, we are sitting in a position and a place of victory and rulership. Okay, just we're clear about that. And our position um, is we already know the outcome of whatever we come up against. We know the outcome already. Now, but there's still things to overcome and subdue. Do y'all, is everybody in agreement with that? There's still things to subdue and to overcome. Now, God is and has been establishing his kingdom in and on the earth for a very, very long time. Now, in eternity, in the realm of eternity, in that time and space of eternity, it is already done. Okay? Does everybody agree with that? It's already done. But in the kingdom of earth, in this time and space, it is being done. It's the process of it being done. And so when we are walking things out, we have to walk them out from being seated in heavenly places and bring that into the earth. Okay, that's what the key of David is. Okay, I'm giving you another key. The key of David, and we have to become like David in this, in that he lived out of the future. David was a Melchizedek priest that would move through the timeline. How do we know this? Because he's told in the Psalms, please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Before the Holy Spirit had even been given to dwell in mankind yet. So he was accessing a realm in the future 
And he brought that back into his day to change the course of that day to create this day. Guess what? We are Melchizedek priests. We are to go into the future, the Isaiah 65. We're to, do you know what Isaiah 65 says? That's where all the blessings are. That's when everything God takes over and takes charge of everything. We are to go into that realm, take what we need from that realm, manifest it here in this realm to change our day to create that day. Okay, are you getting that? You getting it? Okay, we've, that's what we're called to do as priests. One of the things we're called to do is priest. And you can practice that in your individual life. Do you have a need for something? Go into the future, get it, and walk back. And use what you've gotten. You, am, I, am I touching on the, the e-life? <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. So, we know, we know what we're talking about. So... All right, but, but that's what we're learning to do, and we have to do that as a body. Okay? Practice in your life. Practice at home in your life. And when we come here, we can do that together. Now, it is absolutely a ton of fun. Okay? An absolute ton of fun. When you get to go into the highways and the byways and the pathways in the realm of the spirit and, I mean, just wreak havoc in darkness. It is absolutely fun. I mean, it is fun, fun, fun. Where we release, begin to release through our words the lightnings of God, the thunders of God that begin to disrupt the network that is built that keeps people in bondage. You can go all day long and witness and get to try to get someone out of addiction, but until we deal with the realm of the spirit and what's hovering over them and that's overshadowing them, it's going to be a long battle. But if we can get, if we can deal with that network that sits over that community, then we can go in with, with and I'm not going to say ease, because there's going to be resistance, we can go in with much more success. And so we've got to make sure we're taking care of the airways before we get in the ground, on the ground. The church has been real good about groundwork, but little air covering. And we haven't seen a lot of fruit. Can anybody say amen? amen. I mean, we just, we just haven't. And so God's turning all of that right side up. And so we're going to be like David. We're going to learn how to be Melchizedek priest, how to go into the future, get what we need, come back, and so there can be true manifestation on the earth. Everybody okay? Because I'm going to keep going. Okay, I'm going to keep going. So if we, if we do this, now do y'all remember Daniel, what happened with him? Just in case you're wondering about resistance, you remember about Daniel? He prayed and fasted for 21 days, and who resisted him? Prince of Persia, principality, and stood up there and go, I ain't, this answer from heaven ain't coming. I ain't letting that answer get there. I'm going to withstand it. And Daniel kept on, he kept praying, he kept fasting. And finally, Jehovah Perizim showed up, breakthrough, day 21, it broke. There is going to be resistance. There's just going to be. Prayer and fasting. Some things only get broken with prayer and fasting. You know, you can call me old school, but it's in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? It's there. So we're going to continue to do that. We're going to look at, look, go ahead and go to 19, Calvin. Let's talk about resistance. So resistance is the refusal to accept or comply with something. It's the attempt to prevent something by action or argument. Okay? Now I want to let you know that we are not the resistance. Change your thinking if you think we are the resistance. We are not the resistance. The rightful owner of the earth is the Lord. 
He is the establishment. It is his government that has rightful ownership of this earth. The resistance are those who fail and will not comply with his government. Now, if you think we are the resistance, you're going to see us as this little, little thing that we got this. The, the devil, he controls the world. He controls everything. What chance do we have? We just got to make it out of here alive. That is the mindset of many, many Christians. That they are, that, that we just have to hold on. There's, there's no hope for this earth. It's done gone to hell in a handbag. There's no hope at all. If we're here, there is hope. And we have to recognize that's why God left the church here, to bring hope, to bring reconciliation, to bring restoration to his creation. He didn't leave us here to meet once a week and to have, and to have potluck suppers and to and, uh, and, uh, have, be nice to our neighbor. He didn't just leave us here for that. He didn't do that. And so we need eyes to see that we are the rightful heirs of this earth. Do you, do you understand that we are the rightful owners of this earth? It belongs to us. We are not. They are in our territory. Do you know that? Darkness is in my territory. It's, I'm not in theirs. I'm not sneaking to go into their territory. I'm going into their territory to take over because they're not supposed to be there. They're there illegally. And the church, if it will rise up, we can begin to do this. I mean, just... just like that. We can begin to do it if we can unify around purpose and around Christ, the hope of glory, and stop bickering over silly things and move as one body into the, into the earth. So, so let, let your mind wrap, get wrapped into understanding why God left the church here. And, and we have to stop measuring, um, and, and I've said this, and I think Pam will definitely remember it, um, when I said overcoming is the bottom rung of the ladder of government, do you know that? And we think it was the top. It's the bottom rung, guys. It's the bottom rung. The next rung, do you know what the next rung is on the ladder of God's government? More than a conqueror. They didn't announce a victim in that. There ain't no victim anywhere in that. I am slap dab more than a conqueror. I'm going to conquer and then do more than that. See, that's the next level. And, and, and if we're going to hold the gate, we've at least got to be at that level. Okay, no more of this, oh, I overcame. Well, praise Jesus. You know, don't take that lightly. Uh, it, you overcame, praise God. Seriously, praise God. You overcame. But that's not the end. That's just one step. So we keep moving, we keep moving up. And recognizing that all of heaven's resources are in our mouth and at our hand. Like every resource. But do you know angels wait for us to move so they can move? Now, and I'm just going to be honest. If you see an angel in this building, okay, if one pops up and you see it, you need to at least... The very minimum, acknowledge it. That is, hello. <laughs> hello. The next thing, uh, why are you here? Because if we don't honor them by doing that, they don't come. But if we will honor them, they'll come. And at that point, they may say, oh, I'm here to deposit something the Father's given you for you, or I'm here to bust this thing wide open. And if he's here to bust this thing wide open, you better get your butt on that mic real fast. Because he has to wait for the corporate body to move in agreement of his purpose of being there. Okay, do you see your importance? Imagine. Just imagine. That's, do, you, do you see the power that we have in our hand and in our mouth? 
that, that he could bust this thing wide open and we could have another Ashbury revival just by acknowledging he was there? I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to say anything. It's on the mic. I don't like hearing my voice. I don't either. But guess what? It's not about me. I mean, seriously, guys, this is the real deal. This is how we do the stuff. We, this is, are, are you okay? Everybody okay? Okay? I'm not mad or anything because everybody goes, oh, you're so intense. I am intense. I am intense about this. It's fun. I, it, I'm longing for it. I'm just chomping at the bit like, oh. So, so if the very minimum, you better say hello to that being. And then what are you here for? You can ask him his name because his name will probably reveal. If you ask him his name and he goes, revival, you, I'm telling you, it's time to get up on that mic. Do you hear me? If his name says breakthrough, well, come on, we need breakthrough. If he says, fear of the Lord, we want that. Come on. Okay, so has everybody, everybody got your orders now? You understand? You got a question? No. Okay. Okay, quick. Where I don't know where the mic's at. Okay, so uh, after we prayed over there, we were in here. There's just I've been checking things off that I got before, obviously before Connie spoke. So I'll start with the most recent one. To conquering your mountain, your voice is going to shatter the mountain. So what Connie is saying is about opening our mouths. And I got that uh, keys are going to be given out tonight um, to see and perceive what is in the spirit, not the natural. We're resetting old paradigms to a new vision, a new focus, a new purpose, a new identity. And the boundaries are set by the Lord and open the gates. There's one other thing, but I just don't see it. And the only reason that I wanted to share that is just because it just brings validity. It's not like Connie's just making this stuff up, but it's just so encouraging to say, yes, I got that too. I got that. So, so. Yep. that that's good. Thank you, Christy, because that's one of the ways we know we're unified is that we're getting all the same thing. It can be a different word. It can be different, but we all are getting the same thing. Now, a lot of times the intercessors will pick up something. Virginia will come in here. I mean, there are times Virginia will, will talk about my whole message before I even get out. I mean, I'd be like, well, there's no point. What am I doing? She hasn't said everything I was going to say. Okay? Now, that's, that's nothing to be upset about. It means that we're in unity. Okay? So that's one of the ways we know that we're unified. Okay? It's not hard to figure out. We know that we're unified that way. Now, if y'all got time, because I want to talk about Adam for a little bit. Is everybody, everybody good? <laughs> huh? Since it's raining, we're going to go ahead. Rain on, rain on, Lord. Rain on, rain on. Okay. I thought it was a jet. <laughs> Put a time next time. <laughs> All right, now let me get in. I'm going to get into in the beginning. Okay. Now, in the beginning, Adam was placed in the origin gate. Now, I personally believe it was an east gate. You, know, you want me to tell you why I think that? Because in the garden, east of Eden, <laughs> okay, there was a garden, and east, in, there was Eden, was a city. And east of that city was the garden, okay, which tells me it was east. There was an east gate there, okay? Now, did it call it an east gate? No. You learn to look Hebraically by function, okay? If you want to learn about the east gate, go look up every time the word east is mentioned in the Bible. And you will read it, and then you will dissect it, and you will come to a conclusion, and that will give you the blueprint of what the east gate does. And Virginia's going to be doing some of that. Probably Bill, too, will be doing some of that. So, um, and I'm going to explain more of it, but tonight I'm just trying to generalize things. Okay, that's really my objective, is to generalize an understanding. Um, 
Now, in the garden, east of the city of Eden, housed a gate. Does anybody know what the name of the gate was other than Origin Gate? Adam. Okay, connect a dot right there. Okay, what's the dot to connect? We are gates. Okay, this is how you connect dots. Adam, the first gate that he set in the east gate was Adam. Okay, and we're going to look at his name. So, let's see. All right, now Adam was given responsibility to govern so that there was a continual supply of abundance coming out of heaven into the earth. He sat as a gate in between that. Now we've talked about what um, Adam means, right? Aleph, head. Dalit, Dalit, what's Dalit? Door, gate. Aleph, head, mem, water. So he was the head door to the head waters. That was his mandate. That was his function. Now, Adam was an individual, yet he represented all of mankind. All of mankind was in Adam. So guess what our mandate is as sons? Same thing. As he is, so are we in this world. Remember, remember those? See, that's another dot. Let's connect that dot. As he is, so are we. What does that mean? Bam. I sit in the east gate, and I am a gateway that opens, that lives open, that supplies heaven into the earth. Now you make that practical in your life. Remember we talked about that sphere of influence that you have? Family. You have yourself, your family, your city, neighborhood, all that. That's how that works. But in an ecclesia, it works that way too. We sit in the east gate for that purpose. That's one of the functions of the east gate is to be a supply. It's part of this. It, we are the supply chain. The, the, all of the, now, now, we ought to be upset that they are messing with our supply chain. Because we can govern over that and put an end to that stuff. Do you believe that? Okay, are you practicing it? Well, no, we we'll get all personal, Connie. Of course I believe that in theory. Are you doing it for your home? I'm, I'm just being, I'm just, I'm pushing the boundaries because we, we've got to, we've got to become more proactive. Okay. I'm not saying I do all this all the time, but what I am saying is that that's what the purpose of the church is. It really is the purpose. And so what is that supply that's coming out of heaven? It's the river of life. You see, the river of life is about Life, it's about abundance, it's about joy, it's about limitlessness, it's about love, and it's about more than enough. No limits. There's no limits to what that flow can bring. The only limit is how much gate we're going to let it open and close on. That's the thing. And I'm saying this as an ecclesia, but I'm saying in your individual life, you've got to be in that river of life. That river of life has to be flowing through you or you're going to struggle and you're going to, just, you're going to be caught in poverty and you're going to be caught in, in bondage and all sorts of things. So the same thing that we're looking to do as an ecclesia, you do in your personal life. Then when we come together, guess what? The gate is all of us and that thing gets open wide open because we're going to be in unity and we're coming with a purpose to do that and we're going to release the kingdom flow of God and change this area. Now that, that, that's, that, that's real, guys. It really is real. It's, it's, it's a real thing we get to do. So are you, connect, are you connecting dots yet? Please connect dots. 
All right, now Adam lost possession of the gate, right? He lost possession of it. And Christ, he gave it away. He, Christ took it back, and he's given it to his ecclesia. He gave it to his church to govern and to bring the supply of heaven to the earth and to his creation. Now, this is, this is in eternity, okay, in the realm of eternity. Christ is the head. The government is upon his shoulders, and his feet rest on the footstool of earth. That's where his position is. Okay? That's in the realm of eternity, but that's not this realm. Okay? We access that realm and bring it here. Okay, now go to slide 23. Okay, and this is to give you a picture, kind of help you to understand that there are many east gates. There's not just one. There's many of them. And you need to start at the back <laughs> and come forward. Okay? The gates expand. They get bigger and larger. Okay? One gate will open up into a realm and into a dimension that we're to govern. And then in that gate will be another gate. And in that realm, another gate, another east gate, and another east gate, and another east gate. Now, there aren't just east gates. There's a north gate, a south gate, and a west gate. Okay? They're all, they're all there. And they all have their purpose and they all have their function. But because we're sitting in the east gate, that's the one we're going to highlight. Okay, so does that help you to see many east gates? You probably sit in your, the east gate of your family. Most of you probably do. Sit in the east gate. Okay, and so you, you just need to recognize that. This is what sitting in the east gate looks like. Okay, now we're going to get, are y'all ready? Can we, can we tie this up? We're going to tie it up? Okay. Woo! Come on, Jesus. So, but based on what you said, we're all in the East Gate. Why is this ecclesia? Is it, I thought it was about location it do, it is for partly, the East Gate. So if you could about, separate those two, that would be great. It's partly about location and function. But location doesn't determine function. Okay, and then we'll get into that. So we all can go into the East Gate, yes. But the East Gate has a specific function that we need to be able to be inside of. That may not be the only gate you go and sit in. You may go sit in the North Gate or the, the, East, or the West Gate or whatever. You may go into other gates. God may let, you know, have you going into those gates because they, will fu they have a function that we're to release into the earth. But for us, we know we have been given a mandate for the East Gate. We haven't gotten a mandate for North Gate, South Gate, West Gate yet. Okay? So that's, that's why we're focused here. All right, we're going to go to Matthew 16, and that's going to be number 24. And I'm, all, I'm just going to read it. Are we there? Everybody can read, but I'm going to read it. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And then he said, but who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you, say to you that you are Peter, he gave him a new name, and on this rock I will build my church, the Ecclesia. The gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on the earth will be loosed in heaven. And so we, we need to look at this scripture. Now, the first thing is, Jesus said to ask his disciples, who is everybody saying I am? Okay, and they said, some say this, some say that. The whole point of him saying that was it really doesn't matter what they say. Okay, so you need to get over what your family says about you and who you are. Okay, you just need to get over that. That's not the question. The question he then asked, who do you say I am? Now, on that the entire Ecclesia's foundation. Now, that is not, 
the Catholic Church has taken that and said that that's the foundation of the Catholic Church is Peter. Okay, that's not what he's saying. The rock that the church is built on is the confession that you are the Christ, the Son of Man. Okay, that's the confession. And, and he tells Peter, you didn't get this by just getting it. This has to come by revelation. Okay, if you have struggled with your identity, you have to know who he is before you know who you are. If you're trying to find yourself without finding who he is, you are going down the wrong path. Okay, you know who you are by who he is. Don't go, I'm going to go find myself. You better go find Jesus is what you need to do. And he will tell you who you are and he will show you who you are. Jesus is the example of us, not for us. We say that all the time. He shows you who you are. So you want to know who you are? Get acquainted with him. Walk with him. Do what he does. Okay, it's not, it's not hard. But that has to come by revelation. Revelation is not knowledge. Revelation is information that is breathed on heaven, from heaven, and it absolutely changes your structure. It's not just a good thought. It actually shifts you and changes you. Now, now I'm all about reading the Word. Y'all know I love the Word, right? I, do, I love the Word. I read it. I study it. I love the Word. But I'm going to tell you in John 5, do you know what it says in John 5? Let's go, let's go to number 29. But you do not have his word, him, word, there is him, the logos, abiding in you. You can search the scriptures and you think you have eternal life, but you don't. Don't be tricked into thinking because you know the word, you have the word abiding in you. There is a knowing about him and a knowing him. Knowing him changes you. Now when you're reading the word, which I encourage, I encourage memorizing, I encourage meditating on the word, but there is an imperative that the Holy Spirit transform those words on a page into living letters and words that get into you and change your structure. That is revelation. If you're reading along and something pops out, you need to meditate on that and let that thing linger inside of you until it changes you. Don't just read to read. Read for a, an experience of that living word, the word becoming living to you. And it's only by the Holy Spirit that can, that can happen. Do you know we cannot live a fruitful, productive Christian life without the power of the Holy Spirit? Do, do, do we really know that? <laughs> I see a lot of people trying to live a good Christian life without the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's just, we will never produce life. We'll never produce the life of the Spirit. We, it may feel good and look good, but it will ultimately end in death because it's from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and it has to be from the tree of life. Have I, have I, have I gotten that point? Did I, y'all get that point? All right, I'm going to wrap this up at some point. Because right, our only hope really is Christ in us, right? The hope of glory. Okay, so we, we all know that. Now, you've been given several keys tonight. Okay, practice using them. Okay, and we're going to practice before we leave. One, okay, because I think it's critical. It's a critical one. And that's where we're all going to stand up and we're going to be de- begin to declare out loud so that you hear yourself. Do you know faith comes by what? Hearing Hearing what? Coming out of? Your mouth. mouth. (laughs) 
That's, that's, what you, that's the word we need. That's how our faith is built. Is that the Holy Spirit speaks through us and it's living and we hear it and it changes us. That's how it works. And so we, y'all want, y'all want to practice? We need to practice. Okay, so everybody ready? Y'all, y'all ready? We can stand up.